Okay. We are waiting for a second for our president to start. Just a second. Hello. 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 So I can start, Alexander? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Dear friends, welcome to BMD online event. I'm Irina Tikhamirova, the president of International Management Institute in Kiev and board member of BMD. It is a privilege to have all of you here with us. This event was initiated by BMD board. It is very important because we are facing absolutely new challenges. This is the second event in row, and I would like to invite you to our third event, which will be held on the April 15. On April 20, we are holding our BMD pre-conference meeting. Please join us online. About our experience at me, it took, that, it took us 10 days to move all our educational and extracurricular activities online. It was an ambitious task. It was not easy for us, but showed us the new perspectives and opportunities. Dr. Alexander Sudarki, our professor of management and di director of our e-learning club, was one of the driving force of this shift. About Alexander, in addition to his PhD in economics, he holds a degree in psychology. Such a combination helped him to make a teaching more human-friendly. If you will see that we can build together on our experience, we would be happy to continue. With that, I am giving the floor to Alexander. Hope meme experience will be useful to all of you. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you so much. Hello, dear friends. I would like to welcome you here at MIM. Uh, in beautiful Kyiv, Ukraine. It's sunny outside and uh, hopefully you have a nice weather too. Uh, roughly, we will be uh, moving together within one hour. Uh, I hope you can hear me well enough. And if you do, you can uh, use chat function to, uh, and I will be watching it on my screen to say, can you hear me okay? Could you type something like yes or plus in order for me to see that Okay, great, Tina, thank you so much. Okay, yeah, Santo, thank you. Thank you so much. Virginius, nice to hear you. Great, excellent. I'm actually seeing you in most of this uh, on the screen. We have a big screen in front of you. Good. Uh, in order for you to, to see me well, uh, if you are not yet familiar with Zoom, I would like to recommend you the following. Uh, you can point a mouse on me speaking on your screen do a right click with your mouse and pin my video. Zoom thus will help you have me most of the time in your screen, which is, uh, which is more handy. So please do so and, and you will see me there. And you will see me there. Okay, let's pin my video. Good, okay. Um, during our time today, I will be asking you some questions and I hope that this, these little polls will also demonstrate you how to move on during your teaching in order to make it interactive. Because our task during this uh, transfer from face-to-face -face teaching to Zoom teaching was to make it as seamless as possible. And that's actually was easier than we thought because Zoom uh, as a platform, and I'm not really promoting Zoom, I'm, we are not paid by it actually, but it, it is um, one of the most handy tools in order for us to teach via Zoom. So, um, what I would like to ask you is the first question. Where are you from at the moment, guys? And you see the uh, Zoom poll at the screen. We will have about eight of them today, and they are really short and simple. Where are you now? Are you at work? Are you at home? Maybe you're outside or maybe you're in a car or in some other place. 
uh, normally I will be talking about that. We recommend to have uh, Zoom be used just as a substitution for a face-to-face -face teaching. And if you are in a car, we recommend our students to stop, park, and then continue teaching. And we hope to God that our professors are not teaching while driving. No, that's, that's not a good idea. Okay, um, I'm seeing that most of us are at home, 70% of, of us are at home. Cool. This is, most of us are there. Great. I'm finishing our poll and we're moving next. What are we, um, a, a little bit about myself, Ms. Tikamira already presented me. My name is Alexander Sudarkin. I'm an associate professor of management at MIM Kiev. Uh, I'm actually heading two administrative positions beside my teaching position. I'm a director of pre-MBA, a short six months management and leadership program. It's a very soft skill program. The one that is really not so easy to teach as we thought online. It's very easy to project your energy into the audience when you're face to face with your students. But we were thinking how to use this um, program as one of the first programs to start online teaching. But in fact, we were using all our programs to start online teaching at the same time. And I'm also taking a position of an e-learning lab, which plays with tools like Mentimeter, which plays with tools like polls and uh, recordings in order for us to make um, our teaching both synchronous that we do right now and asynchronous. And I will be talking about this later on. I hold two degrees, one in economics, one in psychology. So I'm trying to understand what makes people do things at the another side of the screen. And one of the issues that I will be talking today about is how to use your voice when you present via Zoom. And psychology helps in that. So a little bit of preparation. We're all professionals here, professionals here, but these are several tips that I would like you to um, take as a recommendations before you start a learning process online. Uh, we already checked uh, sound and video stream. I understand you can see me well and you pinned my video so that you can see me. Um, you hear me, I hope, well enough. And I have one of our um, uh, teaching assistants as, um, as a panelist. Uh, Tamara is helping me answering your questions in chat, adding you from the waiting room. It, in fact, this is one of the security features. Probably you've heard the news that Zoom introduced this feature of a waiting room because uh, some people were playing pranks. They were uh, using nasty comments because before, a couple of weeks ago, Zoom was uh, letting professors start classes without a password. And people were playing jokes on that. So right now we are going through a so-called waiting room in Zoom, and then somebody has to add people into, um, into a, a class. The webinar is being recorded, so I will uh, send our dear Ugni the link to our YouTube video, and you can have both slides and the recording of this webinar if you would like to share with this with our colleagues, or if you would like to revisit our video later on if you think something was important. Um, you're welcome to send uh, questions in chat. I'm actually seeing a chat here. I don't promise that I will be answering them immediately, but I'm glad that uh, you're all writing yeses and greats and uh, greetings from Amsterdam. Hello, I'm glad to see you're all here. Uh, in fact, a little bit of offline. You, I would like you to have a pad and a pencil if you want to make some notes. If you are participating from a telephone, and I see some of you are participating from your telephones, or if you're participating from a computer, it's not so easy to use the same computer to participate in Zoom and to make notes. So in fact, a little bit of offline actually helps you make this uh, learning experience better. And one more thing, have a nice cup of coffee or tea or just water for you to have this one hour together easy and comfortable. Okay, let's move on. Um, how far are you familiar with Zoom? Let me, um, 
let me see how, how far are we familiar with Zoom. Like, um, if you could, no, uh, before that, could you please share a little bit? Are you our colleague, a teaching professional, like a professor or assistant professor, or are you a teaching assistant, or are you a student, or maybe you are from a corporate world? Because our BMDA uh, colleagues said that some of these um, links will be shared to our business colleagues. So if you could share what is your major profession, this will help me adjust our um, speaking to, to your needs. Normally in a room, you would do something like I normally do when I start my classes outside of, the, um, of our university. I ask people to raise hands. Are you a teaching professional? And some people will raise hands. Or are you a teaching assistant? And that became really um, a profession number one, I would say, during the Zoom experience. Because I can say 100% that without our administrators and teaching assistants, we wouldn't be able to make our teaching uh, transfer as smooth as possible. I see that some of us are from corporate world, and most of us are uh, a teaching professional or there are some other professions here in our, uh, during our webinar. Okay, so I'm seeing that, okay. Most of us, about half is uh, from a teaching profession. Good. So, and another thing, how far are you familiar with Zoom as a platform to, Wait a second. Uh, as a platform to use interaction uh, during our uh, during our teaching. Okay. Okay. Are you um, absolutely familiar with Zoom, or are you new to Zoom? Do you use other tools like maybe Microsoft Teams, or do you use something else like uh, maybe YouTube or? Um, um, some of some of you use other interactive um, interactive things. Could you please type in our chat what do you uh, what do you normally use as your tool to um, to use during your teaching? Is Zoom number one, or do you use something else? Okay. Team and WebEx, Zoom, Team, great. Canvas, the big blue button. Okay, good. And how far are you familiar with Zoom itself? Are you an advanced user? Or are you, do you know how to use basic functions of it? Or uh, do you try it some? Okay, I see that a lot of people had never used Zoom before. For us, at the beginning, it was a challenge that we faced. What should we use, first of all? Because Zoom was obviously a free tool. It was even before Microsoft uh, told that education, uh, education teams can use MS Teams free of charge for like the beginning half a year. So Zoom with their 40 minutes of free use was uh, something that we tried to play. Okay, you know how to use basic functions. And these several functions that we learned how to use at the very beginning were really functions number one. We had to know how to mute and unmute our um, microphones. We had to know how to start and stop our videos. In a webinar mode, that's not so important. But what is really important and what became a real substitution for uh, teaching is when our students start their videos and I can actually see all the faces in a class. When I speak, I recommend using a speaker view and then they see me most of the time. But when I switch as a professor to questions and answers, and we will be having questions and answers at the end of the session, I recommend having a so-called gallery view when all of the faces are on screen and you can see nonverbal reactions. Okay, so you know how to use basic functions of Zoom. Super cool. This is where you can see, this is where you can see on screen that most of us know how to use basic functions of Zoom. Great, okay. Um, we played with Zoom some, 
And then we um, went through a question, should we use um, tools for distant learning, for remote learning, or is it not really necessary? Because the first question that came into the mind of our students, maybe we can wait for those two weeks and we can come face to face in a class. So these, this is how the um, situation was developing in Ukraine and at MIM. In February 1, we took a proactive action. We created the e-learning lab. Even before that, we were using Cisco Telepresence in order to uh, do remote teaching with our corporate clients. But uh, when the March 3 uh, stroke Ukraine and the first case of the virus was uh, revealed in Ukraine, we didn't really know what should we do. And actually, at that time, we were still doing face-to-face -face defenses of our MBA thesis here in our school. For the two days, March 10 and March 11, we were inviting people in school with all the precautions, please be careful, wash your hands, blah, 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 and all that, but we were having people here at school. But then, next day, March 12th, Ukraine went on quarantine. And that was not really easy because within a couple of days, in five days actually, the metro in Kyiv was stopped. And that was one of the major transportations in Kyiv for not only the students, but also the staff. So what should we do? And at the same day, we did the first defenses of MBA thesis via Skype, the like number one tool at that moment. And in a week, when um, Ukraine announced a uh, 30-day emergency situation. We were doing MBA thesis defenses via Zoom. We, what is the difference? Why we chose that? Because this is probably, to my mind, the best video flow um, program at the moment. Other programs allow you to use the same video flow, um, the, the same video quality. But uh, Zoom is much more reliable, so we decided to use it as a number one tool. And the first lecture uh, was done via Zoom in uh, March 24. So we were actually using the whole functions um, at the March 24. We faced several challenges when we started teaching Zoom, well, via Zoom. First of all, you might know, because most of you are teaching professionals, that professors love teaching face-to-face. This um, thing when you have students in front of you, when you see all the hands, faces, they ask you questions. This is so fantastic. And that's why a lot of us are prefer, uh, prefer teaching face-to-face. -face. Second, most of professors, at least in our school, are not computer geeks. So teaching and doing all the technical stuff at the same time was not real easy for us because we were focused on teaching, not on support of teaching, not on following the chat and adding people and starting polls and all of that. So these three challenges we had to overcome using an online teaching mode. And we started reteaching the whole MIM faculty and staff. We had to reteach professors. We had to reteach students and we re had to reteach administrators and IT support staff in order to use different teaching tools. In fact, the easiest one was uh, to reteach IT techs and administrators. Administrators did a lot of help to us. They are responsible for schedules. They are responsible for um, syllabus, uh, making it available to students. They are responsible for all the little nuances that make the teaching seamless. The recommendations that we took um, is number one, continuous communication between IT techs, administrators, and teaching profession professionals. The more you communicate, the easier it will be. If something goes wrong, or if something goes not the way it was supposed to go, this is when a communication helps. You say, guys, it doesn't go the way we were supposed to have it, and it makes easier. I, I was amazed how little we communicated in the face-to-face -face world. We did a lot of things as if they were understood by another side. No, not in an online uh, mode. 
If something goes wrong, communicate it. The second, what we had to do with the support of IT techs and uh, our administrators, we did an inventory of laptops of our professors. As of right now, it is allowed in Ukraine to go and teach at school where I am now. But we were afraid that the quarantine will be so strict that we had to keep teaching from home. So we had to install programs and we had to learn how to use Zoom settings from home. We, um, what helped us in that? Continuous updates and feedback and uh, rescheduling classes. Our professors together with our um, administrators rescheduled like four hour classes or six hour classes into um, two hour chunks, two academic hours, which is one and a half hour plus another 30 minute break. Rechunking, uh, rescheduling classes into uh, two hour chunks was probably the most intense thing that we had to do administrator wise. After it, we did that, we had to we teach students how to learn differently. And um, the first thing that we started, we were intensively learning ourselves. We were using experience of other business schools, namely Harvard and Stanford and some other schools. We were informing students about continuous changing in scheduling, in scheduling because um, students were not only students, most of our students are business professionals. And um, they had a schedule probably three months ahead of time. Right now, we had to reschedule and we had to make teaching more even. We had to use it in a way that it will be redistributed more smoothly during the week. Like if the teaching before was concentrated mostly in the evening on Thursday, Friday, and the whole Saturday, then we started adding some lectures and some classes at Zoom. Uh, via Zoom during the week. And we had to communicate with them what is different, what goes not the way it's supposed to go. Uh, and the most uh, important thing that we communicated was that MIM keeps teaching. You know, some of the students said, okay, but um, online teaching, isn't it supposed to be free? Or can we skip it? Or can we do something different? In fact, no. Our main message that we keep telling our students, guys, this is the same teaching. It's a little bit different, but it is, um, it is the same teaching that uh, we were having here at school with some additional information. We did a little bit of a change. We um, informed our students with a check, uh, we send them a checklist uh, on how to get most of the learning online. And in fact, this checklist is available if you would like to get it at the end of the lecture. Please tick yes if you don't need it, if you're from business and you don't really need to tell your um, uh, colleagues how to learn online, then click no, I will understand whether you need this, um, this checklist or not. We said something like this, okay? you are still learning. You join the conference probably around 10 minutes before uh, the class starts. Uh, you put a conference sign, I'm on air, in front of your door, and the most important that is not here in the checklist. I wonder if some of you did that already. Did you tell your students, please agree with your um, homemates? with your wives and husbands and uh, everybody else, that this is your learning time and this is as if you are at school. So it's not your dad or mommy or brother or sister is sitting and doing nothing in front of a computer. This is asynchronous online teaching and I'm in class now. We recommended them turning off the sound. We recommended them um, uh, having enough light and that's why I'm speaking today from a, one of our conference rooms because this is lighted properly. You know, uh, one of the little nuances that some of you who have an opportunity to be on TV you know well enough, if you sit behind the um, um, window which is lighted, then your face will turn into just a black mask. 
So we recommend having a window in front of you. Your face will be lighted. Um, there should be some silence in your room. And uh, when I do classes, I understand that in some of the rooms, there are little kids or dogs barking or something like that. Um, and the last thing, you have a plain clothes, not really bright, not really stripy. Otherwise, the camera will not just get it. So again, this uh, checklist is available. If you need it, tick a yes on a poll. If you don't need it, please tick no, I don't need it. Um, I have something of my own. And if you would like, if you could, please check what would you like to have, yes or no, in our poll. Okay, can you see the poll? Okay, you cannot see the poll. Ah, interesting. Just a second. Huh. Okay. So if we no. Okay. All right. Let's skip the poll. So if you would like to see, uh, if you would like to have this um, checklist, please send me yes, and uh, I will send it to. Me. Um, next, what we had. We had to teach professors how to use Zoom functions. And I will go briefly through the, Zoom, the key Zoom functions that we had to use. Muting and unmuting audio, I said that already. An important thing that we had to learn how to do is making our administrators, so our teaching assistants, a co-host, which gives them a right to add people in, leave people out, and basically let's let you concentrate on teaching not on supporting. So if uh, this is one of the most important functions in Zoom that is really handy. We uh, taught our professors how to use chat function. We taught our professors how to use sharing your screen because basically you can do the same thing that you would do in class using the share function on your screen. You can use a whiteboard and you write there. You can use um, presentation. You can use other applications like showing video. You can use nonverbals. And nonverbal feedback is available to Zoom participants because it helps you understand even more. You can, it helps you read minds of your students. They can say yes, they can say no, they can raise a hand, they can ask for a coffee break, and they can ask you to go faster and slower. And actually you can have those little polls during um, during your class. Okay. We, when we were reteaching professors, I must say that some of our professors were quite nervous. That's uh, a really a digital world. And it has a chance to hang. It has a chance to break down. It has a chance not to work. In one of our classes, a professor said, it all went nice, but I didn't see anyone. Why? Because a cable went off. It helps. So this is really, you have to be a stress resilient when you teach uh, online. But it also helps you to play with your students. If something goes wrong, you say, okay, this can help you, especially if you're in business. Imagine that you are a uh, business leader talking to your partners out there uh, in the world. What would you do? and you chat with them and you utilize this situation. We actually had a head start because as I said, we had our MBA thesis defenses done via Zoom already. So most of our professors who are in the academic board, they knew basic functions of Zoom. That was quite convenient. And um, we uh, know how did it, we knew how did it look. We knew the basic controls. So we went to teaching professors how to actually teach. So here are some little nuances that um, we at the e-learning lab started recommending our teachers. Start with little rituals. What I mean by rituals? Probably each of you as a teaching professional has, you have your own rituals 
when you come into a class. You prepare, you put papers, and you open your favorite pen, and you switch off your phone, and you have your water, and you know, you set up your computer. The ritual in a Zoom teaching or in an, any other online teaching is this. Open the links that you want to show on your computer. If you want to use like Statista, or if you want to use uh, Yahoo Finance, or if you want to use something else, you have to think a little bit ahead of time and open the necessary links on your computer before you start a class. You close everything else that you don't, uh, you don't need and you will not be using. You have your polls ready in Zoom because if you wanna ask questions, then your polls have to be uh, ready. You have exercises that you will be using um, ready beforehand and you have your cases upload it in your learning management system if you use it. Uh, one of the things that is a bit different using Zoom when you teach is that you have to uh, do a repetition of your lecture or if, if, of your class before you actually start your class, as if you were in a digital class. For example, if you are using cases that you normally will be distributing in paper, it makes sense to upload them beforehand and then mm, people will be able to download them before they start the class. If you can do something before, you'd better do that before. Then, talk about, let's talk a little bit about teaching. Know your expectations for the class. You know, uh, our Harvard colleagues recommended having uh, something else. If you, uh, when you were transferring from face-to-face -face teaching to an online teaching, it's better to think about what would you like to achieve using traditional, um, uh, traditional tools. And if you are using traditional tools and you would be using these tools in order to get to this learning result, learning outcome, think about how can you achieve the same using an online method. Then think about one or two ways how can you uh, lead your discussion if something goes differently from what you were planning to do? Um, maybe you will ask a different set of questions, or maybe you have prepared your cases or um, interesting experiences, or maybe you ask someone to lead a discussion, and I will be talking about breakout rooms later on. And the most important, or one of the most important, um, we noted, and we didn't know that before, that um, learning online is different time-wise from learning offline. You have to be really keeping an eye on a clock. You can either, either use your wristwatch or you can have a clock handy so that you keep an eye on how you pace your discussion. It is really easy to get involved in a talking to online audience. What we noted is that people who normally would never ask a question or raise a hand or participate in a discussion in a face-to-face -face environment would actively participate in those environments via online. So you can actually have much more interactions when you uh, teach via Zoom. And that's a bit exhausting. The key thing that you need to keep in your mind is that what you manage is you manage the engagement of your students. And one of the easy things to manage engagement is to make regular breaks. What we recommend is having two types of breaks. A big break, like a 30 minute break, is um, about one and a half hours after, so after a short class. But also, and I will be talking about that, you can use short breaks, like um, pull, um, you know, technical breaks, or um, 30 seconds to a minute stretching breaks. That helps people not getting too exhausted when you teach online. Some technical things that we would like to recommend you during your teaching. First of all, is getting rid of all the distractions. At the beginning, we were amazed how many things distract us during our normal class. Somebody comes in and says, hi. They would never do that in a real class. Why? 
because they see people in a room and they understand that you're a professor who is running a, a class. But now somebody can call you on a phone. So we recommend you muting a phone. And within a week or so of teaching online, we put those signs on a door. Do not enter live on air session. That actually helps. I have one in my room and um, when my uh, colleague, colleagues, teaching professionals enter in a room and they see the sign, they know they need to be quiet because I'm running a class. If you are using your laptop uh, in order to teach, a little nuance that helps you be more, um, uh, to be perceived nicer. Place a, you, a camera of your laptop on the level of your eyes. Normally, we have laptops looking from down to up at our face, and it gives you a strange look. But if you can use several big books, and most of us have those big books in our rooms, then you can position a laptop probably, let me show on this, um, it's like about you know, 15 centimeters from the desk that levels the um, position of a camera and that lets the camera look into your eyes as if people from that side of a screen are looking into your eyes. Stress-wise, have a phone number of your administrator or your teaching assistant and IT um, professional handy. If something goes wrong, you say, guys, five minute break, let me call the person who can fix all that. We recommend being about 30 minutes earlier. If something goes not the way it was supposed to go, it's better to have some time to fix that. For example, one of uh, my colleagues about a couple of days ago, she started teaching a class um, from her home, but for whatever reason, um, the internet, the home internet is not as smooth as it is normally here at school. So um, she started uh, preparing and she found out that internet goes on and off, on and off. And she said to her teaching assistant, keep the students five minutes. I will be in school within 20 minutes. She jumped in the car, came into MIM and kept teaching from MIM because here internet is kind of smooth. This helps if you're beforehand and have a drink nearby. You know, um, I'm, those of you who, as I do, teach public speaking, you know one of the things that help you decrease the stress, it's actually drinking a little bit of water about 20 minutes before you start speaking. You talk normally more in class. Uh, in an online class. So if you drink about 100 grams of water, water, please, water, not anything else, just plain water or maybe tea. Um, that smooths your throat and that helps you talk more. I will be talking about maintaining the quality of your voice in, in a couple of slides. Some rules that we recommend you having when you teach via Zoom. Um, you, as a um, teaching host, can do a lot. You can uh, switch and uh, mute microphones of everybody else. You can switch a video of everybody else. You can start the screen, stop the screen. You can start the poll, stop the poll. So we recommend you explaining everything you do with your colleagues because otherwise it will be looking like this. I'm demonstrating. Darn it. And you do something and people have no idea what you do, but they see your eyes and they see that you are nervous. So they think, oh my God, something goes really wrong. And you are just trying to start a screen demonstration or whatever. So if you do something, please explain everything you do. That's the first thing. The second thing, communicate your expectations for this class. A lot of students were, uh, demons were used to participate in a so-called asynchronous uh, learning like Coursera or Udemy or something else where they just listen to a recorded lecture. 
which doesn't require a lot of interaction. When you are at Zoom, which means that you are in a synchronous mode, you can say, I expect you to participate actively in a chat. I expect you to share your thoughts about that. I expect you to prepare this and that and share this at the end of the class. Tell everything you expect your students beforehand. The same actually is about business meetings via Zoom. If you think that your um, business colleagues are supposed to do something, please tell them that you are supposed to do this and this. They cannot read your mind and it's really difficult if you are in an online mode. Some norms that we just impose or we recommend following to our students. We mute the audio when we enter. Otherwise, um, probably you've been at the Philharmonic Hall before the concert starts. All these wonderful sounds. That's exactly what you hear if everybody is unmuted. If two people are sitting in one room with this Zoom unmuted, then you will hear something else, a wonderful sound loop, because a sound from one computer goes into the mic of a different computer. No, you enter, you mute. Uh, we start our videos when we enter because this is face to face. Uh, today we are in a webinar mode and uh, I enjoy looking at you, but when we are actually in a class, I insist on my students switching on their videos so that I see their nonverbal reactions. We use chat actively and we are careful about sitting in front of the light, not behind of the light. If we can, we use headphones. Right now, I'm in a studio which is nicely muted, but if I teach via my computer, I normally had my he headphones for the high quality audio. Last but not least, we are dressed as we would in a business school. Even though our students are studying from home, most of them, we recommend them dressing up before the class so that their mind is uh, prepared to study, not to be relaxed and just digest information. It's not about digesting information. It's about participating in a business class and don't study while driving or even while riding a taxi. Some questions that helped our professors prepare the class. Before the class, ask yourself, what are you gonna teach? What do you want your people, your students, or your business colleagues to get at the end of the session? How will you assess the results? Normally, in a face-to-face -face class, you would see one of the two nonverbal reactions, and I hope you can see my face in a camera. Either, yeah, got it, clear, no questions whatsoever, or, what was it? Um, really? I missed that. It's not so easy to see this via Zoom. You can if they switch up their video, but still. So think about what kind of a poll will you use or what kind of a test can you use at the end of the class? Maybe a simple one, the one that you can use in Zoom or whatever. And when would you like your students to have an information from you? If you want them to read an article, some of us just distribute printed articles. If you are using Zoom or anything else, please use also a learning management system or a Google Drive or whatever and give links before the class. So think a little bit ahead of time. And here we come to an idea. Not everything should be taught synchronously. If you can move some teaching activity asynchronously, do that. So we started using our LMS Moodle much more. Normally we were using it to upload course syllabus, so please go and get your book there, upload presentation slides at the end of the seminar, and maybe some tests. What we started to do is we started to use a calendar. And right now I as a teaching professional start my day after my first couple of cups of coffee by opening a calendar and seeing what are my lectures today. I upload the videos, I start discussion forums, it is not as um, common to most of our students yet, but they start 
you know, asking questions that they would normally ask you at the end of the class. They ask them at the forum in Moodle and you can answer whenever it is convenient and not when your taxi is waiting for you. You can upload uh, recommended articles and you can upload business cases that you would like to teach in a class. Simple guidelines that uh, resulted our first week of teaching. The timing is important. Um, if you let people wait five minutes after the class is over, normally in face-to-face, -face, they are so engaged in your teaching that they say, okay, I like my professor, I'm fine. But if they scheduled another class or another business call, you know, two minutes after you were supposed to finish your class, then it's better to keep the time. One. Two integrity within the course is critical online uh, teaching asks you to be more pedantic if you um, make a if you state a term you'd better have the same definition for this term throughout your lectures you can quick fix these little nuances in a face-to-face -face environment it's not that easy in a zoom environment so you prefer to have you know integrity of the course save your voice. You will never get as much nonverbal feedback from a TV screen as you get from, um, from a living audience. So don't yell, speak normally. This will help saving your voice and drink more often. Another thing that is really, really important, frame your teaching properly. I understand that most of us today are forced to go into an online teaching. It's not our desire, it's our necessity. It's, you know, this um, wonderful, wonderful joke that I um, saw today or yesterday. What, who was the biggest driver of your digitalization in your company? CEO, CTO, or the virus? Um, the virus. Despite of all the efforts of our colleagues, the virus forced us to digitalize real quickly. And a lot, some of the professionals, teaching professionals who love teaching, they say, well, you know, if we were in a real class, no, never say that. Say here today in an online, we will use something new. This is how we're gonna do this in an online class, not, oh God, it's so pity that I cannot see you all. You need to frame the online teaching properly in order for students to teach. It is not so easy for them as well. And if you help them, they will appreciate it. If you make it more difficult, they will moan and yell and will say, yeah, why? And let's wait for the quarantine to get over, or to be over. No, frame it properly. Be more to the point and be more specific Whatever you could cover in a 30 minute class, you can actually cover in a 10 minute speech. And I love having a picture of the group next to me when I teach, even if they switch off their microphones or their cameras. I look at them and uh, this triggers visual anchors in my mind. And I imagine like I'm talking to a group. Some informality that we recommend using. Every 30 minutes or so, I ask to do a little stretching breaks. And it literally goes like this. Let's practice, you know, you're all sitting behind your computer or cameras or um, notebooks or desktops. So just stand up and you do a little stretching exercise as if you are in a long haul flight and you wanna stretch your legs, you wanna stretch your arms and you know, stretch your neck that's enough it's a 10 second exercise yeah thank you i see you exactly it helps your students understand that you are with them you are not talking at them i like to play music before i start start the class i just have my apple music i share my screen and i transmit music and they can hear a music before the class starts this adds you know a little bit of touch and a little nuance and we practice that already 
if you have a group of students, one of them normally is more active. After you finish, you give them a host ride and you let them chat after the meeting is over, after the seminar is over as they would do at the end of the real class, face-to-face -face class. They are talking to each other, and this uh, gives them a sense of, you know, it's just like in a real class. Professor is gone, or he or she is doing their own things, and we are talking to our co-students. I would like to share you my most difficult learning experience at the moment. I will be brief. I teach negotiations as one of my courses at MIM. And I love doing um, business cases, uh, role plays in negotiations. So what I do is um, I, in a face-to-face -face class, I tell people, okay, make groups of fours and you will be playing two by two, two people for a buyer, two people for a seller. I distribute them rolls on paper. They cannot read it before the class. I brief them. I give them 15 minutes to prepare in class. I answer questions when they are in class reading their briefing. They start their negotiation exercise. I watch them negotiate, negotiate. They come to a conclusion and I ask them, okay, what are your results of your negotiations? Write them on a board and debrief. What, nego what preparation is necessary for me? I need to know my topic and I need to have my cases ready and printed beforehand. What did I have to do when I ran this case in, a, um, in an online audience last week? First of all, I had to prepare a role specific pieces of this case. So instead of one piece that I could distribute a paper uh, sheet by sheet, I had to distribute role specific pieces. Then I upload them into Moodle saying, this is a role for a buyer. This is a role for a seller. And I asked my students at the previous class to download them, but not to read them. I told them, you can, but it, it won't be as funny and helpful as, you, as it would if you read it just when the class starts. In Zoom, I asked them, do you have a case handy? And they said in chat, yeah, 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 we have it. I briefed the group all together. Then I use a function in Zoom that is called breakout rooms, and I organize them in fours. So I have about uh, nine breakout rooms with four people each. That's 30, 36 right? people. Then I tell them, okay, in the group of four, decide which pair will be a buyer, which pair will be a seller. Communicate between each other over the phone or whatever you want. How will you prepare for the class? And I tell them, you have your five, 15 minutes, read a, an instruction, talk to your partner. And I was nervous. I thought, okay, will they share their phones or they will share their Vi Viber contacts or whatever. They had their contacts already and it was easy and smooth. In 15 minutes, I broadcast, go. And then I can visit um, breakout rooms one by one. And they say, hi, professor, we're negotiating, everything is fine. And I say, okay, go. And I go to a different room. In another 15 minutes, I broadcast them at 60 seconds before the end of the negotiations. Please prepare your results and send them to chat. They send them to chat. And then we, run, we ran debriefing. I was worrying whether it will go smoothly. It went better than I expected, in fact. But it was difficult. La the last thing that I would like you to share, uh, I would like to share with you. Zoom is not the ultimate answer to all the uh, synchronous teaching. What we use and what I love using. Uh, when I was at Seaman uh, two years ago, I got to know a Mentimeter, a wonderful online presentation tool which gives you a poll, a poll function. And the free function is enough to make small polls it's very convenient to use. So I highly recommend you getting to know if you don't use it anymore and use it. Start forum discussions. Uh, your students will appreciate if they can ask you um, a question and they actually spend a lot of 
time online. So please um, start forum discussions and let them talk to each other. Do some quizzes if you can, again, through a Manimeter or through whatever, Kahoot or something else. And what else you can do is you can use games and simulations online. Like right now, uh, MIM is getting ready to start um, using uh, Harvard Simulation Leaders um, Everest, which I run currently here for our MBA groups uh, in an online mode. That's a fantastic tool that lets you have a group of people going, mounting the summit of Everest, and it's like a six virtual days, which covers about three or four days of a process. That's a fantastic group uh, communication tool. So we are getting to ready to use that at all. If you can add something, please add it. And your people will appreciate it. Play, laugh, be lively. You know what matters? And uh, that's my final recommendation before we go to questions. Your mood matters. Your energy matters. It's not so easy if you are not from a TV world to smile for one and a half hours all the time, but you are facing the camera. And if most of the time you're quietly smiling, that will make the learning day of your students better. I'm happy to answer your questions before I give some information to uh, about our uh, next webinar. Please, one or two questions before we finish, um, you can uh, send them in chat and um, I will be happy to answer those. Uh, Alexander, can, can, I, can I ask a quick question? Please. First, first of all, you know, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm not a beginner, uh, I, I'm not very good user of Zoom, but uh, using that a little bit but still got a lot of tips you know from your lecture so super thank you, thank you very much i have a, a few practical questions one is uh, then you say you 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 like to put your music on so in order to put a music before you know people coming together what technically you need to do so are you simply sharing your screen or you need to put some kind of push some bottom uh, that, that's one thing and then another very short question then you say you are giving the host right to your students after you finish the class. So do you agree with somebody particular to whom you give, you give your teaching assistant, whom do you dedicate that host? Thank you. First, uh, what I do step by step is I open my music player, that's number one, and it has to be playing. Then I use share my screen, a big green button at the bottom of your screen if you're a host of the conference, and then I remember to, t uh, to put a tick at the uh, bottom left of your screen, which says share computer audio. And then I share my music player to the audience and they can hear my music. That's, yeah, okay. Second, uh, normally I'm um, uh, either using the help of my teaching assistant or I'm uh, using one of the students and I say, who would like to be a co-host um, during a conference and uh, somebody types in chat, I would like or raises a virtual hand and I say, okay, I'm giving you a um, co-host rights and you can manage participants. There is a button manage participants, make a co-host or make a host. When you leave, this person becomes a host and they can do it, whatever. So basically within 10 minutes, they finish the conference on their own. Thank you. Okay, uh, do you have any recommendations for the number of participants in a breakout room? So, um, uh, normally, I uh, use the same uh, rules I would use in a, a standard breakout room in a face-to-face -face audience. Four to six people in a breakout room, not more because they will be interfering with each other speaking. The only thing that I am careful about is when people speak, they, um, uh, they cannot hear each other as if they would hear each other in a normal room. So I ask them to um, speak one by one. And if you hear someone speaking, let them finish and speak afterwards or use a chat. How to make, make a YouTube link via share screen? Uh, you share, you open a YouTube link in a browser, in a Google Chrome or whatever. You share screen and uh, then you share your win, uh, browser window and again you tick 
share a music video. So this is like very simple. What view settings are you using as a speaker in order to see your slides and also this, the participants? Two, two modes. One, uh, gallery view, when we interact. And right now I'm in a gallery view, so I see your icons or some of your faces, like Lia, right, or Volodymyr, hi. And when I'm, uh, um, when I'm doing the speaking part, when I'm sharing a concept or I'm briefing a group, I'm asking them to go in a speaker view and pin my video. So the two, two things. Diakoyo, oh, thank you so much. My pleasure, with Laska. All right, I'm happy to answer your questions afterwards. You can, uh, uh, you will be having my email here. It's very simple, sudarkin.mimkiev.ua or you can have me online on Facebook, Alexander Sudarkin. I'm happy to answer your questions. You can send them to Ugne, and if possible, Ugne, I'm sorry to, to make any of this, or you can send them to me in Facebook or in LinkedIn. I will be happy to answer some of your questions on behalf of MIM. Thank you very much. Um, the next webinars on behalf of BMDA will be held on 15th of April, the Leadership on Edge, with my colleague, Dr. Andrew Rozdesinski from Maldiv Business School. On the 24th of April, there will be another webinar called COVID and Industry 4.0, hold by, uh, sorry for, for the last name, our um, Kaunas University of Technology, Takis Damaskopoulos Panagiotis. I, I hope I read it okay. And on May 20th, you will be, we will be having a BMDA online pre-conference. So, my dear colleagues, I was glad sharing this time together. Thank you for participation, and you're always welcome to Kiev, Ukraine. Goodbye. See you.